Hello, welcome to Mr. Paul's Pantry. I'm Mr. Paul. And if you're new here, a very, very warm welcome. If you're a returning visitor, it's very nice to see you here again and thanks for calling. Now, the video today is for making some rissoles. It's a pork and apple rissole, um, but it has developed into a little more, the idea. So I shall start and make the rissoles as planned, and then I will show you some other things you can do with the mixture that you've already made, uh, with, with just one or two little tweaks. Uh, and it's very, very versatile. So it's a, it's a pork and apple um, uh, recipe, and it's some minced pork and a Granny Smith's apple, and it's as simple as that. I'll show you the ingredients first, and then we'll get on with making the rissoles, and then later on I'll show you different things you can do with the same mixture. Okay, let's do it. <music> So, here are the ingredients for these apple and pork meatballs. And there are quite a few ingredients, but very, very easy to get hold of. Nothing difficult. First of all, I've got the pork. Now again, with all my recipes, don't worry about the quantities at this stage. They will be underneath the video, or on my website, or also on the screen as I'm making the video, okay? So we've got minced pork. Uh, that what I've bought is about a 12 to 15% fat content. Um, <coughs> it's belly pork, okay? Belly pork. So I've got some pork. I've got Granny Smith's apple chopped up nice and fine. I've cheated with that, I did it in the food processor. I've got an onion. I cheated with that and did that in the food processor because my arthritis was pretty bad today. Uh, I've got a carrot grated. I've got a spring onion chopped fine. Now I can't buy spring onions here. I have explained to you before. What I do is I use these white onions that I buy. Sometimes they're quite bulbous on the end. But I keep the tops and a little bit of the white and I chop those up and I use that as spring onion which is what I've got over here as you can see. I've got some <clears throat> sweet chilli sauce, little cooking oil, some chopped parsley and a cup of dried breadcrumbs. That's it. Okay. Oh and an egg, sorry. So those are the ingredients. We're going to put them all together. It's very very simple. There's no pre-cooking and then I'll show you what we do next. So, into the pork we're going to put the onion. Then we're going to put the apple next. I don't know whether you can see that, can you? There we are. Put the apple in next. This is a Granny Smith's apple, by the way. And I did just squirt a little lemon juice to stop it going brown whilst I'm talking to you like this. And into it also goes the carrot. The spring onion. The chopped parsley. The sweet chilli sauce. And last of all, the egg. The only thing I haven't put in here at the moment is any breadcrumbs, which I may not, or I may or may not use them. Now all this is going to go into the, let me get this so you can see it. This is all going to be mixed into the pork. Now you can't do this any other way but by your hand. You can use a mixer if you want. I've tried it in the past but I think it makes it too pasty. Um, there's no texture to it when you've done it with a mixture. So we're going to mix this very very well. So finally before we finish with this I'm going to put half a teaspoon of salt 
and half a teaspoon of black ground pepper. There we are. It's doing nicely. Now if you find this is a bit wet, and this is a little bit wet by the way, I'm going to pop in the breadcrumbs. I'll probably put half a cup in to start with and then we'll see how it goes. It's doing nicely. Now I think it's still a little bit wet for my liking, so I'm going to pop in the rest of the breadcrumb. That's a cupful that's gone in altogether. I've used dried breadcrumbs, remember, because if you use fresh ones, you'll need to use a heck of a lot more, because they don't absorb as much moisture, of course, as the dry ones. So this is now all thoroughly mixed. All we're going to do now is form it into the meatballs. That's all we have to do. So you can choose the size you want yourself. I used to, I usually make them about probably the size of a, a golf ball. Well, I don't play golf, so I really, really have a much idea what a golf ball is like, but that's what I do. I'm just going to form them into nice little balls like that. You can do them any size you want. They're actually not meat balls. Uh, I like to call them rissoles because I'm going to flatten them slightly before I cook them. We keep going like this. And when we've done this, when we've finished cooking them, I will then go on and show you several ways you can serve them. There's a variety of ways you can serve these and it really does make it a lot more interesting. I'll just make half a dozen, we'll get on and cook those and then I'll show you what you can do with them. Now if you want, when you get to this stage, you can of course freeze these, uh, freeze this filling and use it at a later stage, okay? So I'll just get the my hands washed and we'll start cooking them. That's it. Okay. Now I'm going to pop the oil in the pan. I forgot to tell you, I didn't put that in with the rest of the ingredients. We'll light this up. There's one going in. Two. Five. I just have room for that one, I think, in the middle. Six. So I'm going to leave those to cook gently now for about three to four minutes on the bottom until they set. Don't start touching them at this stage. They'll all fall apart. Okay, so just we'll start turning them over after about three to four minutes, probably four minutes. So I think they look um, just about ready now. We'll have a glimpse underneath and get them out of the, out of the pan. Yes, there they are. They're looking very, very nice. Turn that off. And there they are. Nicely browned on, on both sides. A bit hot. And I'm just going to clear things away now and start and show you what we can do with them now we've got them. You can serve them in several different ways. You'll be really surprised. So the first thing I did with the uh, pork and apple rissoles was just as I cooked them, have you just seen me cook them on the video, um, I served them like this. I served them with a, a mash which is a mixture of swede and mashed potato. The mashed potato was left over in the fridge, so I didn't have to cook that, but I did cook this swede and mix them together. I had a nice Savoy cabbage, uh, and I just steamed a couple of the outer leaves of that, nice green, dark green leaves, that was beautiful. And I made myself a little gravy, but just to tart it up a little, I put a splash of apple cider vinegar in it, and that just set the whole thing off nicely. It brought the flavour of the apples out of the rissoles beautifully. This is what it looked like when I enjoyed it.
Now the next dish, um, I used exactly the same mixture, but I took some out of the large bowl and added to it uh, a couple of teaspoons of soy sauce, light soy sauce, and a teaspoon of hoisin sauce, which I had in the fridge. And I cooked it in exactly the same way as you saw me cooking the rissoles on the video. And then I served it over a bowl of vermicelli rice noodles, uh, of which I just chopped a few vegetables as I boiled the noodles. I dropped them in just to make it look more colourful, that's all. And that was a very, very nice oriental type meal, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Now the next recipe, I'm still using the same mixture. Uh, I took a little more out of the bowl and I chopped up finally some root ginger, fresh ginger, and a small garlic clove. And I mixed that in with the meat and a teaspoonful of soy sauce. Made it into uh, smaller meatballs this time, I think it was, yeah, smaller meatballs. Uh, and I fried those off just as you see me do in the video. And I served them like this. Uh, with some saffron rice and I made myself some sweet and sour sauce. Now I've got plenty of recipes on my vid on my website for sweet and sour things so you can see the recipe for making sauce there and I, I thoroughly enjoyed that sweet and sour pork in a different form. And finally I made another oriental dish uh, and I didn't make meatballs with the mixture this time I put it in the pan, chopped it up, but I mixed with it uh, some chilli. Now you can use fresh chilies, you can use chilli flakes, or just a hot chilli sauce. But I put some chilli in uh, and a little fish sauce, and I fried it loosely in the frying pan, so it was all loose, like minced beef comes when you fry it. And I put it into some uh, little lettuce cups, which I had from uh, Little Gem Lettuces and made these beautiful lettuce wraps and I made a dip to go with them with some uh, soy sauce and balsamic vinegar. Well, that's it for today, folks. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you go ahead and try some of these dishes. Very simple with one basic ingredient filling. It's just the pork and one Granny Smith's apple were the main ingredients. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the site, uh, you can do so free of charge. Just click on the red button and a little bell will appear. And if you do that, YouTube will tell you every time I put up a new video. Now, <clears throat> if you have any questions, comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section underneath this video. I do read every single one and I do try to reply to as many as I possibly can. Uh, and it's... Uh, it's uh, nice if you could share it with your friends on uh, social media. That would help me enormously. Well, that's all I have time for. So it's Mr. Paul saying bye for now, and I'll see you next time. Bye.